Oh, yeah, that's turning out really good. Hi, everyone. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I guess you just need headphones yeah. or else there'll be a echo. I guess for those of you online, we're just getting set up. Um, Oh yeah, I'm not a doctor. <laughs> yeah, no need for. <laughs> okay. Can you guys hear me okay online? Maybe you can just let me know in the chat if you can hear me okay. Can you see the chat? If there are any. Hi, everyone. Yeah. yeah I'm okay. Yeah, they said they can hear me. This here, uh, she brought these by mistake. So here's the thing we got to take with the box here. One, two, three, four, five. Is that clear? Are you able to hear? Okay. For those of you that are online, are you able to hear me? I just kind of set all my microphone settings. Okay, awesome. Okay. Oh, I have a. Do you want one? Or let me see. Oh, you know what? I don't have the right headphone. Okay. Thank you. For those of you online, we're just getting set up here virtually, or we're just getting set up in the room. So maybe I go um, into my office and then come back. Oh, okay. So then I can maybe introduce. Do you want me to introduce you uh, in my office? Sure. So quiet? Yeah. Come back. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to share my slides right now. Do you guys see my slides online? You can see the orange watercolor slides, okay, online? Awesome. I actually have two little prizes that I also brought. Oh, if you yeah. want to okay. add two more well, little. Uh, we can, or you can just pick whoever asks you the best question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. <sighs> Okay. So for those of you online, I'll just be like walking <laughs> around the room as well. So I'll come back in and out, but at least you guys can see the slides online. Okay. 
She was going to go to her room and then I guess introduce me from the room or she was going to get online to it. I think, yeah. So maybe I can. Can you hear me? Invite them face to face and uh, thank you for all that are online. It's my pleasure to have here Fanny Danagan. Fanny is a CEO. <laughs> and an expert in LinkedIn content creation. And I would say that if anyone needs some help with LinkedIn, it's myself. <laughs> On the other hand, he says the message that I'm not looking for a job. So I know if that's, you know, mm. yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, anyway, so I'm uh, personally looking forward to see how I can make my LinkedIn page better, just in case. Uh, I will let uh, Meha, who is supposedly there online. Do you yes. see her? I'm here. Mm -hmm. I'm here. Hey, are you there? Just say yeah. something. Oh, uh, she's there. Okay. Yeah, I was there. She cannot hear you. Yeah. No, because I'm. I have it on speaker. Oh, yeah. okay. 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 Can you hear me now? I think. Yes. I think they can hear they you. They can hear you. Hopefully so. Yeah. Go ahead, Meha. Please introduce Fanny here. Yes, so um, uh, thanks Fanny for being here. Th Fanny is the founder and uh, video content strategist of Passlink, a consultant firm that helps uh, business owners, coaches and consultants to create digital content, video strategies and content plans. She also trains and empowers individuals and leadership teams to take charge of their personal and business branding, create value for others, and build an engaged community around their products, services, and values. Uh, as a senior consulting at uh, Arthur Anderson Business Consulting and HCL Technology, she served uh, Fortune 500 clients such as Singapore Airline and United Technology Corporation Aerospace System, as well as Republic of uh, Singapore Navy. So uh, I think uh, she is going to uh, basically, uh, she's also volunteer her time speaking at colleges, careers fairs, and job search networking event to serve those in career transition. And so uh, we welcome her here to explain, um, you know, some of the uh, basically help us to, to uh, in, in get empowered, basically. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Okay, so I think this is actually my first hybrid event. <laughs> so I guess I'll just kind of balance between looking at the camera here and then coming out and speaking to you guys out there as well. And so bear with me as I kind of do both. Um, but as she said, my name is Fanny Dunnigan and I um, own an agency that does LinkedIn branding, video marketing, content marketing and branding for um, small business owners, coaches, consultants, as well as enterprise level technology firms. And um, and I think how many people are active on LinkedIn? Can I see a show of hands? So so maybe. Oh, quite a few of you on in the room and let me know in the chat for those that are virtual as well. If you're active on LinkedIn um, right now, LinkedIn has become so much more than just a job search platform, right? It's become a place to do business. It's become a place to exchange ideas. It's become a place to find other people in your industry to collaborate with, to learn from, to exchange ideas, to um, partner up. And so it's so much more than just a job search site. And so I strongly encourage you and you guys get to kind of get a head start on it to build up your LinkedIn brand and kind of like really set up your image and your brand so that when you do graduate, um, you know, there's already people that know you in your industry. Um, how many of you are undergrads? Can I see a show of hands? Okay. And then how many of you are graduate students? Okay. So about two thirds, one third, or maybe even 50-50. Um, and what about you guys virtually, undergrad or um, graduate programs? I'd be curious to see. Okay. Um, so I'm going to just dive right into it. Let me go to my PowerPoint here. And of course, it's going to go a little. Okay. 
So for those of you, um, my name is Fanny Dunnigan. Like I said, you can find me on LinkedIn most of the time. So I encourage you to kind of look me up. I post a lot of content tips and advice and just free content and industry trends and all that on my LinkedIn. So again, like one of the things that you can do as you kind of grow your career and even while you're still in school and college, right, is to start posting things and build your brand on LinkedIn so people start to get to know you through your content. Um, a little thing about me, long, long time ago, decades ago, I was actually a civil engineer. So I was telling Karen that when I walked into this building, I was like, it kind of brought back all those years of like being in college and studying in the library and <laughs> watching Star Trek and eating mac and cheese. So that was kind of like my geeky life back then. Um, but now I'm on the marketing side of things. And uh, but at the same time, still kept my ties to technology because I do marketing for technology firms. So for those of you out there, like, I think when I was sitting kind of in your spot, I always thought like I had, I could only be one thing or like follow that straight, narrow path. But as you kind of grow and realize your careers, you can really merge a lot of your interests. Um, and that's what I ended up doing, merging like my marketing interests and people interests with my techie side and geeky side. And so I ended up doing marketing and branding for technology firms. So it became this really nice marriage of left and right brain. Um, and the same is possible for you, just depending on what your interests are. So yeah, look me up on LinkedIn, feel free to connect and I'm happy to connect with you. I also have a YouTube channel where I upload tons of interviews with industry leaders as well as um, content LinkedIn content tips and all that is free as well obviously so feel free to subscribe to my channel it's Fanny Dunnigan you can look me up there and um, yeah I, it, I have industry experts from supply chain to how to grow a podcast all about building a brand no matter what industry you're in. And then also every every week I have content tips that I post. So there's a great resources for you. And then I'm actually resurrecting my live stream. So every Thursday at four, every other Thursday at four, I live stream and like share tons of LinkedIn content tips as well. Okay. But today I'm gonna kind of go through and talk about like why LinkedIn? Why waste your time or why spend your time on LinkedIn, right? Why commit to that? Um, and then how to define your unique brand, right? There's, you know, everyone's a computer science grad or everyone has a computer science degree here, right? So I think, right, it's, everyone's in computer science. So how do you stand out, right? How do you set yourself apart from everyone else? How can you define yourself as unique? So we'll go through an exercise to do that. So that's gonna be very interactive. And so you'll be able to kind of like jot down in your notebooks and like kind of figure it out. And I'll walk through that exercise with you. Um, the four purposes of all content, right? How you, what kind of, what do you post once you get on LinkedIn? And then how to leverage job descriptions for content ideas, right? So as you start to look out there and see what jobs are possible, some of those job descriptions are gonna be great places to um, find ideas as to what kind of content to post on your LinkedIn. And then from there, how to build a community, okay? So let's go through real quick about why LinkedIn, right? Um, if you were to Google your name, right? When was the last time you guys Googled your name? Has anyone done that recently? Yeah, what did you find? when you Googled your name? My listings at UTD. Mm-hmm, yep. Um, and so a lot of times like, but within your top five job search or search results, right? A lot of times, especially if you have a common name, if you add your city or your specialty, what you're gonna find is your LinkedIn profile is actually gonna be within the top three to five search results on Google, right? And nowadays, 
before we hire somebody, before we buy from somebody, we're Googling, right? And we're looking and studying, reading reviews, checking people out online. And so it's really important to curate your LinkedIn profile so that when somebody pulls you up, they see something very complete in your LinkedIn profile. So Karen, I Googled you because <laughs> you're the only person I kind of knew here. Um, but yeah, so you can see obviously, right, UT Dallas, number one search result. Um, below that is, I guess there's a Rate My Professors um, site. <laughs> and then from there, the third job search or third search result is your LinkedIn profile, right? So that's why like LinkedIn is so important in terms of searchability for your name, right? And, um, and that's what people are gonna be doing when they're when they get their your resume or when they look you up right so over the last year right in the midst of this pandemic what's happened is linkedin has had 15 times more content impressions meaning people are reading posts and content on linkedin than they are looking for jobs right so it's no longer just a place for jobs it's where people go to learn and educate themselves and find other people in their industry, right? Find leaders in computer science and other uh, engineering and so forth. And um, it really is the number one global platform for professionals. So now's the time to like start connecting and finding experts in your computer science field and industry and connecting with them. Say, hey, I really like that article you posted. Or hey, your article or your blog or your post or your image on whatever that science, computer science topic is, really enjoyed it. Do you mind if we connect and so forth? And so you can really start to build your network. Um, I always say like, it's not what you know, it's who you know. So it's really important to build that network now, even right, right off from college. Okay. So I'm going to give you some statistics, right? You guys are in computer science. I'm sure you're very analytical. I'm very analytical. So I need to see the numbers, right? So let me show you some numbers. Okay, LinkedIn has 722 million global users, right? And however, only 0.4%, right? Globally share content on a weekly basis. Right? So of all the people that are on LinkedIn, only 0.4% are actually posting anything on a weekly basis. In the Dallas-Fort Worth area where we are, right, 3.7 million Dallas-Fort Worth users of LinkedIn, but only 4% posted in the last 30 days. Right? Your feed might look busy, but statistically, only a very small percentage of people are creating content and posting content on LinkedIn. However, 47% of LinkedIn monthly users are active. So 47% of LinkedIn people are looking and what I call lurking and just watching and reading, right? They're not interacting or posting, but they're watching, right? So you got 4% in Dallas-Fort Worth that are posting, but 47% that are looking. So what happens is you have this huge demand for content and information that is so much greater than the actual supply of content, right? So if you're the one posting, then you're gonna get noticed. And right now LinkedIn is still has tons of organic reach. You don't even need the paid or premium account, right? You can, do, you can still use the free account and really start to get noticed for your content and for what you post. Okay. And then who's on LinkedIn, right? Different from Facebook or Instagram or TikTok or whatever social media platform, when you go on LinkedIn, you know exactly who posted something. You know their name, you know their job title, you know what company they've been with, you know their job experience, right? They're the leaders, decision makers, influencers, and you know exactly kind of like their past and their history, right? Their work history. So 90 million senior level influencers, 63 million decision makers, 10 million C-level execs, they're all on LinkedIn, right? 
And even from a faculty perspective, Karen, we were talking about like, you know, wanting to create corporate partnerships, right? LinkedIn's a great place to find those corporate partners, right, for the college as well, um, for internships, for jobs. Yes, sir. Is there a process these numbers? Ah, that part is up to that individual. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, um, that's just a matter of how do how do you know on any platform? But um, yeah, on LinkedIn they don't have that kind of like that blue verified button that's on like some of the other channels. Um, but uh, a lot of times I check check it out to see if the person that's posting, if they're on video, and then whether that video is actually the person. Um, that's kind of how I kind of check it out. So why create content? Okay. Why create it all? When you post content and create content, you're going to end up attracting people that are interested in that topic or in that niche that you're in or in that in computer science, right? And it's going to create business opportunities and job opportunities because people start to see you, right? Otherwise, you're, you're a student in the college and industry can't see you. But as soon as you post something of your work or maybe your day-to-day -day life or you know some of your studies or your research papers or whatever it is that you're working on, right? people that are interested in that topic will start to see you right, and start to engage with you. And you're going to attract people that are outside of Dallas Fort Worth, outside of the country and like in other industries even. And so it's a really great way to kind of build your network outside of just this immediate circle that you're in. Right. And the more that people get to know, like and trust you, then the more they're more willing to hire you. Right? Like Karen and I didn't know each other, right? Um, but I think you heard about me from someone else, or it was, yeah, you, you like scoped me out, right? Is she legit? Is she for real, <laughs> right? Um, and but we all do that, right? Before we buy, I, I just moved house. Before I bought some of my appliances, I'm googling and researching, right, and looking at reviews. That's that's the world we live in now, right? And we do that for people as well. So the more you create content, the more people are going to feel like they know you before they even meet you. Right? And that's how you're going to start to slowly get in front of potential employers, potential recruiters, potential people that you might do a project with, internship with, and so forth. So that's kind of the why, right? So now let's talk about you, right? So I hope I kind of justified in a little way, like why LinkedIn and why create content. So now let's talk about your brand, right? What is this word called brand, right? At the very basic level of it, your brand is your reputation, right? What, what do people know you for, right? If I say, oh, Susan, like, what are people gonna think about when when they think of Susan or John or whoever it is, right? Whatever your name is, like when people mention your name, what are they going to think of first, right? And the more you create over time, for me, like people know me as, you know, the video content person or the content person that posts on LinkedIn, right? And so the more you post, the more you're going to be known for what you post on. So, but one of the things that always hold people back from creating content is they're like, oh my gosh, what if like people judge me? What if people disapprove of what I'm saying? What if I make a fool of myself? What if I stumble? What if, you know, judgment and all that kind of stuff, right? That's the number one thing that stops people from creating. Fear of judgment, fear of disapproval, right? And we're nervous to create. But one of the things that I always try to remind people about is when you create content, as long as you come from a space of value, 
like how can I help somebody today? What can I post to help them with their career or to share something that I learned that I think is valuable to that audience or that person? And if we come from this place of value, of service, of helping people, then that's how we're going to kind of overcome that fear, right? And so it always, I always say like, it starts from your heart in a way, right? And I know that might sound cheesy, but I stand really firm behind that, right? And what I always remember pe remind people about is when you create, when you stand up in front of people, when you present, this is your little reminder that whatever you have to say and the person that you are, you matter and you are enough and you have value to share with people. You have something of value to give to people. Whether you are in grade one, to high school, to college, to graduate students, you all have value. You all have something worthy of saying and worthy of putting out there into the digital space. I grew up very quiet and I grew up very like a typical Asian household where like I shouldn't speak until I'm spoken to or like I should raise my hand in class and like be very like quiet and like dutiful and and I never spoke up. But I had tons of ideas and I have tons of things to share. And over time in my career and especially in consulting, I realized that I had value and that if I didn't speak up, I wasn't going to get the promotion and I wasn't going to get the job opportunities and I wasn't going to get the business clients. Okay. And so start, start from college, start young, right? You all have value to give. And everyone has a story. Okay. So one of the things that really resonate with people outside of just a resume is their stories. Right? You can hand out your resume to all kinds of companies and all kinds of recruiters, but what people are going to remember the most and what people are going to feel the most is when you share a story. Right? Why did you end up in computer science? Of all the topics that you could have chosen to pursue a career, why did you choose computer science? Right? Ask yourself that. That's a story, right? Was it because you find tech and gadgets really cool? Was it something that really pulled you towards science or math? Like, what are those little things that drove you to computer science? That's a story. And that's something that you should all jot down and share with recruiters. And you can even put that as a post in a video or an image or a text on LinkedIn. Okay. For me, all my stories over my career, they all become little pieces of content, right? Because there's tons of other marketing people out there, right? But I share my stories so that if people resonate with it or find a connection with it, then they might be more likely to hire me versus someone else. And same goes for you and your careers, right? So I was saying like, you know, as I kind of share my stories, you should jot down to yourself like little stories about yourself, right? So for me, I started off as a civil engineer. Um, how many people remember what show I like to watch? That's right. You get a prize. <laughs> See, like those things are like little things that are you remember from people, right? Um, I can't walk very far, but uh, so this is a lapel mic. Very similar to this, so there you go. You want it. Um, but it's those little things about people. You're welcome, thank you for answering. That people are gonna remember you by, right? Little anecdotes. Right? Um, and then from there, I got, I did three years of that, and then that's when I started to, I had enough of Excel sheets. <laughs> And uh, I got into business consulting. And with Arthur Anderson, for those of you that are older in the room, do you remember Arthur Anderson? Yeah, it became a center. 
But even before that, exactly, they were brought down by the Enron scandal. All of you can like Google Enron and see how it brought down a whole consulting firm. Um, but, uh, but over time, um, I ended up getting into technology consulting, SAP. Do you guys know SAP? Yeah, it's an ER enterprise resource planning system. Um, so I got into that doing training and communications. Um, and all that was great, right? I had, it was like 100% travel. If any of you want to get into consulting and you love travel, like it's amazing. Obviously right now we're in the midst of a pandemic, but um, back then it was just awesome. Like you fly out Monday morning to the clients, work all week, fly back home Thursday, and you rack up like tons of hotel and airline points. And, uh, and you also get to go see all these different clients and I still remember like my first client, it was Singapore Airlines and the uh, the office that they had for all the consultants, it was like right beside the hangar. And so I got to like walk past all the maintenance crew and like them fixing the planes in order to get to the office that I was working in. And every day I was just like, I felt so like lucky, you know, just like three years into my career and like being able to see all those things. And, um, and so that's the, the geeky side of me that loves planes and tech and all that. Um, but as I kind of got further into my career, I couldn't travel anymore because I wanted to have kids. And so I became a stay at home mom for a while, did resourcing and training part time, had a second child, and that's when I felt lost. So for those of you that are still not totally sure what you want to do with your career, Right? Even though you're obviously in computer science, one of the things you can do is actually volunteer. Right? Find technology associations to volunteer with or to help out with and start talking to people in your networks. Right? Um, I belong to an association of business technology professionals here in D um, Dallas, Fort Worth. It's abtpdfw.org. And it's a great way to like start talking to people in your industry, in technology, and see if it's a career for you, right? Um, but over time, I grew that into a business. I was helping a local outreach center with their job fairs and training programs. And then those job fairs became these huge events. And I ended up helping employers market as well as job seekers market themselves. And hence, I became a content and video strategist, helping people post on LinkedIn and build their brand. So it's a really funny path that I ended up being on. Um, and I used to feel kind of embarrassed that it was so like all over the place. But now when I look at that, like everything came together, right? Now I get to do communications, training, branding, but for technology firms, right? So you can ask yourself, like if you're kind of creative, plus you're techie, like you could do that kind of stuff, like within every technology firm, within every corporate job, right? There's all kinds of other variety of roles. Um, so, you know, those are the things that are possible for you and opportunities. So when you're building your brand, ask yourself, like, who do you want to serve? Right? Who do you want to work for? Who's your ideal boss, your ideal colleagues, your ideal teammates? Right? Who are the industry leaders that you follow? Right? Is it Steve Jobs, um, uh, Sheryl Sandberg, uh, um, like just industry leaders across the board, Michael Dell. I was listening to Michael Dell talk about a new book that he was um, writing on, on the way here in a podcast. Right? Whoever it is that you want to follow, start to find them on LinkedIn and engage with their content and find other people in the comments so that you can start to interact with them and find those industry leaders. Okay. And so once you figure out who you might want to work for or who you might want to work with, right, then you can start to build out your brand, right? So how are you going to be unique? I want you to draw out four boxes, okay? And those of you online as well, like 
get out your pen and paper and draw out four boxes, right? And box one, what's your expertise? In your case, you could write down like the three subjects that you just love in, in school, right? That you just love it and you like gravitate towards it. What are those things, right? And then from there, what are your values, right? Do you value creativity, responsibility, honesty, um, innovation, um, sustainability, whatever it is, what are your values, right? And think about that and put down three words with regards to that. And then from there, your strengths, right? How many of you have done Clifton Strengths Finder? Have you guys done that before? If you're trying to figure out what you're great at, innately great at, go to um, gallup.com, store.gallup.com, right? And it's a great assessment to figure out what are your strengths. Right? It's gonna, you're gonna answer a bunch of questions and then it's gonna tell you what are your top five strengths. So even when you're like tired and stressed out and all that, right? What are you innately good at, right, personality-wise? So that's a great thing to do. And then your interests. What are your three hobbies? What do you do when you're not in class? What do you do on the weekends? What sports do you play? What, um, you know, books do you like to read? Are you, movies? Um, it could be sewing. It could be knitting. It could be basketball. It could be football. Whatever it is. Write down your three interests and your three hobbies. So from there, you're going to have your expertise. You're going to have your values. You're going to have your strengths. And then you're going to have your interests. Okay. And so those things form your unique brand. And so my example for myself is I talk about content strategies, right? What to post on LinkedIn. Right. And one of the some of my values is trust, transparency, community. Right? So those are all words that I always talk about in my blogs, in my articles, in my videos, in my infographics and so forth. Right? My strengths, if you do that assessment, um, my number one strength is connectedness. So I'm always about like connecting people and ideas and thoughts. Right? So I use the word connections and connectedness a lot in my content, right? Because that's what I believe in. And I love travel. So I'll weave in like travel videos and photos and tie them to content and my values. And then that becomes my content on LinkedIn. Okay. So what is, can you shout out like one expertise or one course? that you guys just love, or one of you loves in school? Just shout it out. Discreetment. Discreetment? What's discreetment? Sorry. Discreet oh, discrete math. OK. OK. And then what's a value? Shout one out. What's one of your values? Honesty. OK. Um, strengths. I mean, OK, even if you don't do the assessment, what, what do you think is one of your strengths? Just shout that out. What's that? Truthfulness. Truthfulness. Nice. OK. Um, and then what's an interest? What's a hobby that one of you guys has? Swimming. Swimming. OK. OK, so let's pretend that that's the makeup of one person. OK, somebody that loves math that values honesty and truthfulness, right? And, um, and then swimming is their hobby, right? So one content or one type of content that you could put out there is to share a story um, from your swimming training, right? And you can tie that to like a math topic, right? So let's say, what's a concept in discrete math? that you could tie to swimming. You're swim you're the one that's swimming in math, right? And the what's that? 
just swimming. OK, so let's say discipline, right? Is something that you need to that you need in both math as well as swimming, right? So you could talk about the discipline that's needed to get through your math courses and homework and assignments in college and how that reminds you of when you were training for swimming and that every morning you had to go and do that, right? Same with math, right? You're always you have to like practice your calculations and your homework and all that, right? And so you can write a blog or an article that ties your love of math and swimming together. Okay? So suddenly you have this very unique piece of content that only you would have that unique combination. Okay? You could have just written a generic article or blog about some math concept, but that's kind of dry, right? But as soon as you tie in like a interest or something to do with um, your hobbies or your values, then suddenly that article becomes more three dimensional, right? People can picture like the discipline of swimming and how that could tie to like homework or like the the rigor that you need to apply to get through solving problems, right? Um, so these are all unique ways to build out your content and build out your brand, right? And hopefully the people online can kind of see that kind of example as well. Um, and so that's how you're going to stand out. Okay? You're going to be known as the math expert or math enthusiast that always has swimming examples, for instance. Okay. Um, I have a client that's a CEO of a technology firm, and his value is all about growth and learning. Right? He always listens to podcasts and books. Right? And his strength is he's very analytical. Right? Everything is very process oriented and lists and all that. And he loves golf. So now he writes a lot of technology articles and ties that to golf. Right? He talks about like setting goals and that's the same as lining up a shot in golf and so forth. Right? Do you kind of see how you could like take what you know from an academic standpoint and tie something fun and of interest of a hobby and make that topic a video or blog or article so much more interesting. Does that make sense? Okay, I hope this kind of sparks some ideas for you guys. Right. And then let me know in the chat online if you have any questions as well um, so I can answer that as well. Any questions from you guys right now? Yes, sir. Um, when I have young students come to see me and discuss topics like this, which is why I want to do that, mm -hmm. the presentation, but one of the issues that seems to come up is we say, you know, put on stories, which I think is a good idea, but then they sometimes seem to have poor judgment in putting on inappropriate things. Mm. Like, you know, I'm sort of exaggerating here, but here's a picture of you parent playing beer pong. Right. You know, right. Something like that. Yeah. So I think they have to be careful, right? Yes. On the particular things they choose to tell stories about. Right. You want to present yourself in a positive way, right? Yes. Just to the world. It does. Absolutely. You need to use judgment. Now, if you use a beer pong um, example, but tie that to geometry or physics, that would be pretty cool, right? <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, we all know that people drink in college, <laughs> but if you could tie it in a unique way to your studies, then man, that would be really cool. Sorry. Good. Somebody for something, they might think Dr. Wright Yeah. Yes. Someone look at it and tell us something that is not right. Yes. Maybe some other group of people might tell us that's a great example. Take a movie like Squid Game. Yeah. I hear all these great reviews. What a great movie. I seen the movie. I said, well, 
I know. So it's probably the same with the uh, resource post exam. Yes. Something yes. I like to do our best. Yes. If you put something out there, even professional, you put an opinion. I say this about movie, if I put it there. Mm -hmm. And I relate it to computational journalism. Mm -hmm. like you have people with completely opposite views. Yes. So how, how would you meet with that? So, yeah, when you're marketing yourself, you yes. want to express an opinion like in politics. They may even you may get your right. rights, even if that wasn't your intention. Yes. You know, and could you also make a comment on uh, where the judgment is regarding privacy issues um, versus what you post on LinkedIn? And mm -hmm. I suppose it's another judgment call, but you it is. be real careful with that too. I'm sure. It is. Yeah. So for those of you online, the question, if you didn't hear it, was, you know, what judgment call should you have when you're trying to decide what's appropriate to post or not appropriate to post? OK, um, number one is like ask yourself your target audience. Right. Different platforms have different audience, right? If you're on TikTok or Instagram, then you can be a little more wild. Go for it, right? Facebook, maybe that's more family oriented. Like for me, my Facebook is very buttoned up because I have pictures of my kids and I only connect with friends and people that I know, right? And then LinkedIn, I'm only talking about business career. And even if I share a story, it ties back to career and um, work. And I never, ever post anything about my kids on LinkedIn, right? So you really kind of have to decide for yourself, like, who's that audience on that platform? So on LinkedIn, it's professionals, right? It's people that may hire you for a job or hire you and or that may end up hiring you if you're an entrepreneur one day, right? So you got to ask yourself who is on the other side and then based on that, decide whatever I'm posting is that who is that the image that I want to share with them, right? So number one, like who, right? And then from there, you really have to make a judgment call, right? I, I don't post about religion or politics because I just, you know, that's my rule for myself because it just gets into way too much debate. But I'll post about things that are important to me, like encouraging women in technology, right, and STEM careers. That's very personal to me, and that I feel ties back to career and my values. So I'll talk like on International Women's Day, I'll talk about we need more females in technology and content creators and so forth, right? But I'm not talking about anything to do with politics or religion, right? So I kind of like, you have to make the call as to what do you want your employer to know about you, right? What do you want your colleagues to know about you, right? But we can get a, a bit more personal than we used to be. Like 20 years ago, like it, especially like when I was in Arthur Anderson in accounting, it was so buttoned up. Like there was dress codes for everything. You couldn't wear like spaghetti straps. Like like there was so many rules, right? And you had to be like so-called perfect and say exactly the right thing. But things are actually changing now, right? Especially with people want authenticity. People want realness. If you look at the videos that are out there, the slick corporate videos actually don't get as much engagement and viewership as the raw, authentic, behind the scenes kind of videos. Because people seem to kind of like distrust a bit more of like things that are too polished nowadays, right? Whereas like something real behind the scenes, even if you shoot it on your smartphone, right? Um, I've had, I've encouraged companies you know, to like walk around their their um, offices, right? To show potential recruits and say, hey, this is our conference room, this is our lunch room, and like do behind the scenes tours and just kind of like show the realness of things, right? And so we are moving away from trying to be too perfect to more real and authentic. Um, but always ask yourself, if I post this, what will a potential employer think? But at the same time, you also have to ask yourself, like, whatever you post, you 
are not there to appeal to everyone. You're there to appeal to those that resonate with you or find a connection with you. Right? I'm not for everyone. Right? Um, there's other people that are super high energy and like rah, 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 and like super like extrovert and like, and so there's certain people that gravitate to that for marketing. Right? For me, over time, and you're going to develop and you're going to figure out yourself and like figure out your brand and your personality. And for me, I'm just about like facts and heart, right? I would say create for your head, people's head, and create for people's heart. So I might be too like woo woo for some people, and that's okay. They can just scroll on by, right? Same with you. If there's a certain thing that you really believe in, right? Those that believe in that as well, they'll stick with you. And those that don't, they'll scroll on by. Go ahead. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Some people love controversy. And so they will post that, but then they will attract controversy as well. Okay? So for me, I just, whatever doesn't resonate with me, I scroll on by. And if that doesn't sit well with you, then don't do it that way. You're always going to find other brands that sits well with you. And so be that way, not the controversial way. Unless you're a person that really loves that and thrives on that, then be that, right? Just know that it comes with a price, okay? And kudos to them, right? There's journalists and there's, you know, authority leaders and industry leaders that love being controversial, right? Go for it. Right? Because they thrive on it. They thrive on that competition and that edge, right? And they'll attract a certain type of audience. Right? But if you're more quiet and more thoughtful and like whatever your personality is, and that's why it goes back to your unique brand. Like what are your values, your strengths? Right? And just be that. And you'll end up attracting that type of people to you. Because right? controvers controversial people will think like, you're so-called boring, right? Because you're not eliciting this like huge emotion. And that's okay. Because there's tons of people that just want calm content, right? So just decide who you want to be, and that's who you'll end up attracting. Does that help with yeah? You feel what? Sorry. A little bit Yes, you can change up your feed. So let's say, um, so one of the tactics that you can do is actually use hashtags to find interesting content, right? So if Let's say you go and start following hashtag innovation, right? If you type hashtag innovation into your search bar, it's going to pull up all the posts that have that hashtag. And that's where you can start to find new content and new topics, right? If you're done with like math topics or whatever, type in hashtag science, hashtag discrete math, hashtag um, psychology. Right. If if you want to switch up the content in your feed, just start following different hashtags, and then it'll start to like populate your feed with new topics and niches. After all, there's like hundreds of millions of people, right, that are on LinkedIn. And there's hundreds of millions of topics out there. Any other questions? Any questions from online? I haven't hopefully I haven't lost people online. <laughs> yes, no, I mean hi. Yes, uh, I'm. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yes, I'm Bhavani Turesingam. I'm 
one of the three together with Karen and Mira, we, you know, I work on this, uh, uh, you know, gray series, also yeah. a professor of computer science. And I was heading this, I was a founding director of the Cybersecurity Institute. But anyway, I've got a fairly high profile, I would say, you know, I give lots of, you know, keynote addresses and fairly busy on LinkedIn and Facebook and so on and Twitter. But I still uh, I struggle with using social media mm. and especially LinkedIn, though. That's what I don't know. I mean, Facebook, I'm very, you know, it's quite easy for me. And I only yeah. post professional stuff on Facebook. And I also do that on LinkedIn. But LinkedIn yeah. seems like when I open up my LinkedIn, it seems like a jungle to me. <laughs> I don't know. Is there so much of information? I don't know even how to manage and what to post. And I'm com yeah. completely, I mean, I've written a book on social, analyzing social media. And tomorrow yeah. we are on a panel on social media. So I really understand social media inside out as a researcher, but, and security, privacy, and so on. When it comes to using social media, yeah. uh, I'm sort of, I would say about average or below average. Yeah, I, and, I really like to brand myself, but it's hard for me. Yeah, well, one one of the things, especially especially for those of you that present a lot, right, mm -hmm. and that are on panels, is to actually record them, right? Yeah. And so you could have like a sixty minute presentation or webinar or panel that mm -hmm. you're on, right? Mm -hmm. And a great piece of content is like once you record it, cut out little one or two minute snippets, right? Even yeah. if you guys are get presenting on a certain project, let's say, right? Record it, even if you just record the audio even, right? And cut out little one or two minute snippets, and then that becomes great content to post on LinkedIn. Because then it ties into what you're speaking about. Sure. You're already kind of like, an authority figure speaking about something, it only enhances your brand when you kind of cut out those little snippets and post it on LinkedIn. So that's a great that's, way that's to really, start. That's excellent because I do have YouTube. I've, over the pandemic, I've, all my keynotes I record, but they're all yes. like one hour long. And I've got yeah. about 55, yeah, nobody, 55, honestly, 55 videos. Yeah. But I, yeah. So I cut don't know out one or two minutes. We, we live in like a short attention span world, right? Let's yeah. be honest. Um, unless somebody really wants to sit down and listen um, or attend a webinar, right? Um, what's really better is once you record it, cut out those one or two minute snippets and those become great, what I call micro content for LinkedIn. Yeah. Thank you. Thank and you I'll, very much. Yeah, and, and I'll give you some examples. Um, so just now I kind of like talked about the statistics and then the brand. Now I'm going to give you some tactics, right? The how, right? We're all analytical engineers, computer science people. Now we want to know how, right? How do you do this? Right? So let me give you some examples. When you create, even if you never post, right? You're still scared or you're still hesitant, right? One of the bare minimum things you should do is at least comment. Right? Engage with content that you enjoy, right? Find those new hashtags or topics that you might be interested in. Even if you want to suddenly do hashtag creativity, right? Hashtag marketing, do something totally outside of computer science even, right? You'll be surprised what else you could discover out there, right? And start to follow and connect with companies content creators, people in your network, people that you might want to be hired from, your target employers, and follow all those companies and people that work there that you might want to work for one day, right? And start to see what they're posting, right? Start to see what's out there, right? Even as faculty, right? Like, if you were to join a certain company, like, what would it be, right? And follow them and see what kind of content they create and post, because then that's going to help you keep up to date on trends and the latest topics and the latest things that companies are creating content on, right? And from there, like the content, right? Share it, but the golden nugget 
right? Like the one that you get most points for is actually comments. Right? You can probably see when you follow companies or people, everybody will like or heart or whatever it is, but very few people comment. So if you want to be noticed by an industry leader or a manager or a hiring person or a certain company, right? Comment in the feed because then you'll be noticed that way, even in that small way. Right? If somebody commented on a post of yours, wouldn't you check them out? Right? You could get 50 likes and like just one comment and you're going to be like, oh, who commented? Right? Even if you just say, great article, I really liked your point about whatever. And just repeat that sentence, right? Even that in itself, think about it if you posted that, like that creates like this little connection between you and the creator. And that's how you can slowly start to create connections and relationships with people online from a professional standpoint, right? Maybe you're following somebody around discrete math or like some kind of technology trend, right? If you're always commenting on their posts because you respect them and like the content that they have, over time, they're going to start to get to know you in a little way. And then that's when you can like after the fifth or sixth time that you comment, you can reach out and say, hey, I really enjoy following your articles about whatever. Would love to maybe get some career advice from you, would you be open to having a phone call? Right? And so suddenly your comments lead to message and potentially could lead to a phone call to somebody that you respect and admire. Right? And that happens all the time. And that's how I meet potential clients and employers, and that's how I create relationships in my networks. Right. Comments are very powerful. And if you never even post, at least comment. Right. That's your that's your little like crack in the door and that can get you into um, networks and people that you might never normally have. Does that make sense? And then from there, if you are going to post, there's four purposes of content okay because you know a, a lot of times people tell me oh my gosh i don't know what to post like there's so many things i could talk about so many like ways to say it what do i say what do i post well i'm giving you four categories okay and you can lump everything into these four categories number one educate so that's things like research tips advice best practices white papers articles things that are around your expertise, right? Remember that expertise box that we talked about? So for, in your case, it could be around the three favorite courses that you're interested in, right? Number two is informational posts, right? So tell people about conferences you're attending or lectures or grace series or what all these kind of things, right? Um, number three, inspirational posts. That's when you can share a quote from an industry leader, right? We've all seen those things of like somebody quotes, right? Some something about positivity or something to lift people up, right? Those still work on LinkedIn and it's okay to post those on LinkedIn. Just tie it back to career and school and work. And you can still be entertaining and I'm going to give you examples, I promise. You can still be entertaining and funny on LinkedIn and still tie it to careers. So I'm going to give you examples of all these. Okay, so educate, inform, inspire, and entertain. All content do one or all four of those things. Okay, so what are examples of educational posts? Right? If there's a book that you're reading about a certain topic in your industry or niche, post that. Take a photo of your, the book you're reading or the podcast you're listening to, or even your textbook or a page in your textbook, right? And say, this really resonates with me because of these three reasons. Or these are the five things that I learned from this book or this podcast, right? So you're educating and sharing with people. And at the same time, you're also kind of 
people know you for like, you know, improving yourself, right? I was really into productivity for a while, so I posted this book about atomic habits, right? Cool gadgets. Um, I'm, I talk about videos and all that, so I was like posting about storage and how to increase your storage on iPhones, right? People resonated with that. Um, you could do PDF posts, which are like slide decks, right? And so for me, it's all about LinkedIn content, so I do like slide decks of LinkedIn content. You could talk about, you know, the five trends that you see, the top five trends that you see in computer science right now. What are those? So forth. Okay. And then this was what I was talking about. If you have a video of yourself presenting, even if it's like 60 minutes, just cut out one little portion from it and then post it online. Okay. If you don't like being on video by yourself, you can interview somebody. You can interview a professor. You can interview a student, right? And say, um, you can say so and so, like, what advice would you tell your 21 year old self? What career advice would you tell your 21 year old self? That would be great content for faculty to post. Right? And then even for you guys, right? Like, you know, what is what is one lesson you learned from your first job? What did you learn being a waitress at this restaurant? Maybe you learned something about customer experience and dealing with clients, right? Uh, you, were at a you were a cashier at a grocery store, for instance, your first job, right? What did you learn from that experience? Remember those stories I was talking about? That's where you can tell a story, but tie it into careers, right? And it doesn't even have to be anything to do with computer science, but you're sharing about something you learned about leadership or strategy or customer experience or handling conflict with a colleague, right? All that's relevant. And then obviously for me, like why create content? So I'd create a deck on that, right? And you can repurpose um, for, for the, uh, I think the faculty that was asking the question about the content, right? Even your slides, right? You could, chop up one slide, maybe your one slide had five bullet points. You can have one bullet per slide and create a PDF piece of content on LinkedIn around that topic. Okay, so those are examples of educational posts. I realize I'm over time, is that okay? Or? Um, yeah, I did wanna probably wrap it up very soon. Okay, yeah. I'll go through this quick. Um, informational posts, right? If you're attending these kind of webinars or series, take a photo and talk about it or like promote it, share the flyer, right? If you're attending a conference, take a photo with whoever's speaking, right? I was speaking at the SAP users group at UT Dallas last week. And so we took a photo and then they posted, we got like 45, um, you know, engagement and uh, comments. And so it's a great way to like tie it back to school, but it's still relevant for LinkedIn, right? Um, I went back to my college, my old university and had a tour, so I posted about that, right? You guys can post about projects that you're working on or labs or whatever is allowed um, within the college, but there's so many things that can be pieces of content to show people the type of person that you are. Then you become so much more than just a piece of paper of black and white text and resume, right? You become like three dimensional and have someone with a personality. Posts of like quotes I mentioned, um, I even holidays, you could write something. I said, say your career wish out loud this Christmas. So I tied the holidays to career as well. Does anyone know who that is? Simon Sinek, start with why, right? If you attend sessions, try to take a photo with the speaker, right? And post about it. And rather than just saying I met him, I, I said like, these are the five things that I learned from him and so forth, 
Right? These are the five things that I learned from my professor today that really resonated with me about leadership, for instance. You could post about that. Right? And I talked about, you know, needing more women content creators and so forth. And this is how you can be entertaining and tie in your interests, right? Swimming or whatever kind of hobbies, right? So I love Lego, even though I'm an adult. <laughs> And um, my son loves it too. But Lego had this uh, thing on their Instagram about Zoom calls and the different characters. So that ties to the business world too. We're all on Zoom, right? So that's a funny thing that you can post and still get great engagement. Um, I love travel. So I talk a lot about like missing travel in the consulting industry. Um, I love Star Wars. So again, like if you love a certain thing, but I tied that to content creation and storytelling, right? It was May 4th, may the force be with you. I know I'm a huge geek, um, but that I tied it to storytelling and the power of stories, right? You could do bloopers. Yes. So do you comment on other people's posts? Yes. So it's reciprocal, right? If you find that people are not commenting on you, I spend at least 10, 20 minutes every day commenting on other people's posts. But I'm very specific and intentional about that. So I comment on people in the technology industry, in marketing, in HR, because that's kind of like my niches, right? So if you find that your audience isn't growing from your content, then you got to go out there and give yourself and comment on industry leaders and other colleagues or other students or faculty. And that's how you can build it from the other side. So try that. Let me know. Yeah. Um, and then travel photos as well. I do want to say this, use this one example, OK? This is another way to come up with content ideas. Right? Take any job description out there that is of interest to you. Right? In this case, this was a business analytics internship. Right? And go through them. You'll find them on Indeed or you know, whatever company job post that you're looking at. And highlight little things that you feel you would be interested in doing. Right. And from there, that can generate content ideas. Right. So one of them is like the top one says effectively presents. Right. So they're looking for somebody that knows how to present. So if you have videos of you presenting your projects or um, the results of your labs or whatever, right, then that's a great demonstration of your presentation skills. Right. Um, and here it talks about like, this person needs to be able to create reports, right? So maybe you write an article about your five favorite reporting tools and so forth, right? So just go through this here, like values leadership, right? So do posts of you leading teams and groups or writing about a project team that you were on, right? And leadership qualities that you might have demonstrated, right? Those are all great ways to use job descriptions, even if you don't get hired for this. If these are things that resonates with you and that you're good at, then post content around that. Does this make sense? This one is like really useful and that'll tie in really well with um, jobs that you might apply to in the future, right? Even if you're just in second year or third year, right? And you haven't graduated yet. Okay, and then they'll create job opportunities and business opportunities for you. And so this is my last step right to your point you're posting and it's like the empty forest right the tree falls and if it's empty nobody can hear the tree falling right it's just like silence well then you got to go out there and give yourself right comment reply to all comments spend 10 to 20 minutes five minutes even if you're busy right just commenting and on industry leaders in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, employers and so forth, 
right? Connect with people that like your content. Connect with people that comment on the feed of your industry leaders too, because if they like that article as well, then you know you might have something in common together, right? Support your friends, colleagues, like these are your classmates, right? You become your own community here. And I always say like, use the five to one give to ask ratio, okay? For the five times that you post about something or that you engage with somebody, only ask on the sixth time, right? You might comment on somebody's feed five times before you then say, hey, really enjoyed your content, would love to connect, would you like to connect? Right? Can I, so that I can continue to follow your content. Right? Don't just take, don't immediately message somebody and say, I'm looking for a job. Nobody likes that, right? Let's be realistic. But if you give and support somebody, then there's going to be so much more willing to then take you under their wing or mentor you or give you some career advice. And I just want to leave you with this thought that you all have value to give. You are all a light that should shine in the world. So shine your light, share your gifts, share your messages with the world, and hopefully you'll do it through content and video. Okay. Any questions? Yeah. yeah. Ask the questions for 10 o'clock. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful talk. I really Thank benefited. You. Yeah. Any questions? So I, have another, I have a question. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. So my question is, what do you think about this public relation firm, relations firms? Uh, what are, what's their role? They say that they will help you with your social media. They will brand you. They will get, get you into because I have given, uh, I have participated in panels in Fortune magazine, uh, three or four podcasts and so yeah. on. But then how do I become more of a, not a household name, absolutely not, more of a professional name where people will call more on me because we are UT Dallas. We are an excellent uh, university, very technology oriented, but not as much marketing savvy, you see? Yeah. So do you recommend these public relation firms? They cost off a lot. Yeah. I, I, is there like an echo? I think we need to we can turn them on volume. volume. Um, my thought on that, so the question is like, you know, do you feel like you need to hire a PR firm? Um, I think a lot of that you can do yourself, honestly, and, and start to implement some of those tips and, and do it organically first, because mm -hmm. I, I do feel like we live in a society now where you can build your own brand without having to pay thousands and tens of thousands of dollars. Yeah. Um, and I would start there of doing it yourself before hiring someone else. Okay, thank you. And also have a nice website, right? Uh, not just an yeah. academic website, a more a professional website. A nice LinkedIn profile, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Well, thank you to all of you online. Appreciate it. Feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. I, I'll be connecting with you. Thank you.